So what I've got is a old Lincoln Weldpack 100. This was purchased back in the 90s. And, uh, they still offer models real similar to these today that are mostly the same thing. Kind of targeted sort of towards the beginner, but they were uh, one of the first on the market that were a flux core welder that could be easily upgraded to a, a MIG welding setup. And uh, this has been used with flux core, well, since it was new, and I'm uh, going to attempt the upgrade to to the MIG setup. And uh, you even got a bottle ready to go. So I'm going to dig into this and see what it takes to get that done. So as far as the gas is concerned, this is the assembly that makes that happen. Uh, this is part of the original setup. This is the original wand, and you can see it had the provisions for uh, for the gas. This being the inlet side, this being the outlet side. And it originally came with this cone shield, as intended for use with the flux core. So when you upgrade to the MIG setup, you need to get a MIG shield so that it'll it'll direct the gases and, and allow the gases out. So this plums into the tank to the gas outlet on the valve. As you can see here, it regulates the gas flow. This is not an adjustable one. This uh, is set from the factory. A lot of people upgrade to one with a uh, flow control as well, but um, I'm not going to worry about that because this is sufficient for my needs. Um, and the output of that, I had to purchase this hose. The only thing I had to go with this was the, the regulator and the control solenoid. Um, I had to purchase the other stuff to make that work. Uh, if you have the opportunity to upgrade one of these, one of the big advantages to buying the kit is it comes with all the little fasteners and hoses and everything you need. Uh, you'll see a lot of people on forums saying you can get away with doing it cheaper by just buying the parts separately, and that's true, but you need to hunt all that stuff down yourself, whereas the kit has it all ready to go. So, we've got a regulator. Uh, once the gas is on, this is this is just on and working once, once you have the bottle on. Um, this solenoid, this is a 120 volt solenoid, and uh, there's tangs on the uh, board in there that this will this will connect to and when you pull the trigger you'll have 120 volts on this and that will trigger that solenoid and allow the gas to pass through this low pressure hose the other end of that hooks up to oh, uh, the receptacle of this which allows the gas to pass into here and then on out through the gun um, this hose I didn't have the original hose that came with this so this is actually 3 16 fuel hose but it fits on there nice and snug and uh, since this is not pressurized in any way all you really need is just a good seal something to direct it to where you need to go so this should be sufficient so uh, you know, yeah you can see this plugs into the front here and if you can see that this little uh, gas inlet here this is where the where the hose attaches so that's where we're going to hook it up but first we got to get this thing apart so we can get that installed All right, on the back here, uh, a lot of times there'll be a little plastic plug in there. You just pop out, and this is the mounting mounting surface for the uh, for the control solenoid. So you can see the bottom of it. It mounts up in there, and if you have the right screws, which I don't, you just fasten the screws from the other side. I've got a random assortment here that will fit for now until I get some nice. Allen machine screws that'll fit into there. Um, if you can see up in here, you see the two tabs here, uh, H1 and H2. Let's see if I can point a little better. 
there's the H1 and there's the H2. And as mentioned earlier, this is uh, AC line voltage, so there's no polarity there. It doesn't matter how how you hook those up. And uh, uh, I assume all Lincolns have this. As soon as you pull the inside off, you've got a wiring diagram uh, showing everything available to you there. And you can see the H1 and H2 labeled here gas solenoid h1 h2 so uh before i realized this was here i had to actually put a voltmeter on that and verified that the line voltage uh was there when the when the trigger was pulled so uh yeah i would have saved myself some trouble if i would have noticed this was on there but i would have verified it anyways so it doesn't matter all right so let's start the assembly Screws don't want to go in. Okay. Probably would have been smarter to put this on before putting the solenoid in, but here I am. Safety disclaimer, make sure you have it unplugged before you start jamming tools into it. Okay, so you can see I have the solenoid in there. I've got it wired up. I have the hose hooked up to it. Ran through, passed to the other side through the hole and then down to the little fitting there and that uh that should be it as far as the the box itself the welder itself is concerned so uh next test let's actually plug it in hook the wand up and pull the trigger and see if the solenoid clicks Guess it would have made sense to check that before buying the Argon. Oh well. Well, it's clicking. I think that's a good sign. All right, we'll go ahead and assume that that's going to work, and we'll put the case back together. All right, so a couple things need attention in here. And uh, most people mention the polarity. You gotta switch it when you're uh, going from flux to MIG or MIG to flux. You need to flip it around. For the MIG setup, uh, you want the electrode to be positive, which I had already started setting that up that way. So that's already wired up that way. Uh, one thing I see a lot of people miss is the drive wheel down here. And you can see it's got two, two grooves in it. Um, one groove 
is larger and has teeth in it and that's for gripping the flux core uh, the smaller groove is for gripping the uh, the smaller solid core so we need to roll this around to where we can get the set screw undo that set screw pop this off flip it over and then uh, stick it back in there and then I'll throw, th uh, throw a spool of um, O2-3 in there so we'll do that real quick been setting for quite a while it doesn't look too good but I imagine you get a layer or two down and it'll probably be okay so All right, should be ready to go. Got the nozzle swapped out. Uh, I'm gonna hold on to those because if you ever switch back to flux core, you want to use that instead of uh, instead of leaving the MIG nozzle on. I had a Harbor Freight welder that had like a fake uh, fake MIG tip, and it was always catching splatter when I was welding. So these are definitely nice to have for the flux core, but that appears to be feeding. And all that's left now is just to hook the rest of the gas up and then find something to weld. Had a little trouble with the feed roller at first, but it smoothed out after messing with it a little bit. And it's actually not doing too bad. Uh, yeah, that was the last one I made that after it started working right. So, cool. I'm happy with it. So I was having a few issues getting the, uh, the heat and the wire feed speed set right. And while I was doing that, the... Uh, feed roller started sticking and causing issues so once I got that through that issue I uh, put a little o-ring on the little holder deal so it doesn't put so much tension on it that seemed to help a little bit I think a lot of the problem was as I may have mentioned earlier the wire has been sitting for a while and it's got a lot of uh, uh, had some corrosion on it uh, I pulled a lot of that out but there was still some in there and I think it was hanging up when when uh, he was trying to pull that off of the reel. But towards the end, it seemed like it was feeding pretty smoothly. And the wire's not looking so bad now, so I think I'll be in good shape. Uh, gonna have to practice with it. But uh, yeah, it's not too bad. I think it'll be okay. I'll, uh, I'll probably have some projects to work on with it pretty soon, so I'll probably 
make videos of those so show it a little bit more in action but as far as the mid conversion that's about it